Hey everybody, Ethan here. This is Plan B, the series where I talk about what it's like to slowly lose all of your money working on music. After a few weeks traveling around the country, I'm finally back home in Boston. Good to have a little bit of stability in between these trips, and that also means I can roll my usual intro. That feels pretty good. Since filming episode three, I've assembled a few more creature comforts here that should make this show a bit more flexible. I got some lights here, a webcam, uh, hopefully a better mic slash sound situation, though I'll be experimenting around a little bit with that. Uh, and depending on where you're watching this, I can finally come to you in fabulous 60 frames per second. Hopefully everything's looking about as slick as it can be so that I have one less factor hurting my algorithmic reach. Now, as far as actual musical output goes, it's been an interesting week. I've been revising some of the worst lyrics I've ever written for a song I put together for a gig in 2019 and uh, never released because the lyrics were so bad. I've also been prepping for a filming project here, hopefully more on that in a future week, and sharpening up my performance skills on my song Faces, which is my latest official release and also came out in September of 2020. I should probably put more things out. But anyway, last but not least, the event that inspired today's topic. On Wednesday night, I headed over to an open mic night at the Lily Pad in Cambridge and played a Beatles cover with my friends Alistair and Chris. And it went over great. Now, I've known both Alistair and Chris since college. Together with another friend, Liz, they're in a local band called Hush Club, uh, which you should definitely look up. And we had been talking about doing this sort of thing for quite a while after jamming together a couple times in Boston. This all was hard to prepare for while I was still working full time, but now that I have my act together a little bit with regard to time management, we got it done. This performance made me reflect on two things. Firstly, it reminded me of how much I have fun performing. Like I suspect many people, I can count my prior gigs since COVID-19 hit on one hand. There was a house show where I played bar band tunes with high school friends in Portland, Maine, a little thing uh, the month after for the 2022 Berkeley International Folk Festival, a fun show as Ogrins in Bar Harbor that July, and a few Australia and California concerts the next month, sitting in with my old acapella group, the Din and Tonics, as a ringer. All awesome opportunities, to be sure, but that's really it. For some musicians, including this one, there's an itch to perform that you need to scratch every so often if you want to feel like you're still in the game. I didn't realize how much relief I'd feel getting up on even that small stage and playing just one short tune. For me, performing feels like I'm actually alive again, like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in life. And while I still have to work on my stage presence a little, somehow it feels like it gets a little less awkward every single time. The most important reflection here, though, was the value of collaboration. Cheering other artists on, being invested in their material, and rooting for their success. The thing I was struck by at the open mic night was how nice, open-minded, and really supportive everyone was. Most performers were going around before sets, introducing themselves to each other, trading contacts, and getting excited about each other's work. The audience cheered for everyone and actively participated whenever they were asked, even if the requests were a little bit unorthodox sometimes. I felt like I made a few friends at the end of the night. As someone who's never been in a scene this actively supportive, it before. It was all shocking and inspiring. And in all of this, I think there's something a lot of people could learn here, maybe not limited to just music. Now, all the usual disclaimers for my advice apply here. I'm a wildly unsuccessful musician. I don't know what it's like to amass or sustain a large following or have people awaiting your next release with bated breath. But I am a creative person. I have mingled in a lot of creative spaces, and I've talked to a lot of successful people before. And I think as much as I know anything about music, I know this. Success, maybe defined here as making a career sustainable, is never guaranteed, and in the arts, it's probably unlikely for most of us no matter how hard we work. However, for those of us who feel like they need to try, myself included, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't also be introspective about our own conduct and how it affects our likelihood of making it or not. Because trust me when I say this, there are a lot of ways that we can ensure that we will achieve no success, and no mistake is more common in my experience or more devastating to your chances of making it than to take no interest in others. I'm not gonna name names, and if you know me and think this is you, it probably isn't because I'm almost certain these people are not watching this video, but 
I know a good few people who are really good musicians who've spent years honing their craft who are never going to make it because they view success and happiness as a zero-sum game and are too suspicious of competition to help out anyone else. It's unfortunate, but seriously, I'd put money on it. Now as artists, it makes sense that we'd get a little bit absorbed in our own output by nature. We think about it a lot and we always want to make it better. Add to this the fact that there's a lot of people trying to get ahead and maybe only a few visible slots at the top, and maybe that no one has ever done anything for our work and we end up with a recipe for very toxic, bitter, self-absorbed behavior. We become resentful of other success, even our own friends. We won't go to other people's shows because it'll just make us feel bad about ourselves and they won't help us out anyway. How do I know about this mindset? Well, I've been there, at least a little bit. Growing up as a visible musical figure in a small town micro scene, I developed an arrogance of a sort about my output. For years, I was attached to the concept of being discovered by some talent agent, convinced that looking for help or accepting feedback from others would be cheating. Exposure to the real world and all the ways that I needed to improve later on made me bitterer still. Everyone else who succeeded seemed to have help through their connections and resources. It wasn't organic. Why should I support them when they never ask to hear my music? Why should I attend their shows when they'd never go to mine? <clears throat> does any of this sound familiar? If it does, watch out. It is almost always the case that no one likes to be around people who think and act like this. And if people don't like you, they will probably never listen to your music. Now, I can't tell you I've entirely moved past this that I'm some kind of paragon of non-toxic virtue. Just like anyone else, I have good days and bad days. But the more people I met over the years, the more I realized that on average, the successful musicians I met were really nice and open-minded, often characterizing themselves as just having gotten lucky. And none of the people I've ever met with this bitter zero-sum game mindset have ever gone anywhere. Realizing this, I knew I really needed to work constantly to minimize it in myself. Now, don't get me wrong. There is plenty in the modern world and in society for artists to be frustrated and bitter about. Plenty of inequity, unfairness, and favoritism. I do not mean to diminish these things when I say all this stuff. But, my goodness, other artists in general are the last people we should be frustrated with for all this. Largely speaking, they do not hold the power or make the decisions. They're often struggling too. Reciprocity is never a guarantee in social interactions, and we'll always be disappointed if we always expect it. But if you never do anything for anyone else, they're probably not going to do anything for you either. If it's not already happening, life is way too short to sit and wait around until it does. So take today to buy a ticket to that show your friend is holding. Write a song and ask that person you jammed with a month ago if they'd like to sing on it. Remember that album your friend sent you a few weeks ago to listen to? Maybe you should actually try listening to it. And if the lack of certainty in any karmic reward isn't enough for you because the universe is a very unpredictable place, do it because it's the right thing to do. And also because if you like music, you should probably support musicians. Reciprocity is not the floor for possible outcomes, but more often than not, it sure is a pretty reliable ceiling. So in the timeless words of the New Radicals, I can't believe I just wrote that, we might all do well to remember that you only get what you give. If you want to see more from me and or hear my music, please consider subscribing or following this channel depending on where you're watching this video, and check out the description for more social media links. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for a new video soon, and I wish you the best for the week ahead.